You're a little late, aren't you, Yank? War's been over a year. Last of your army's going home. I've been this way before. That so? When? Winter of 65. That's when the blue coats took Columbia. Burned it down. I know. I burned it. With malice toward none. With charity for all. With firmness in the right as God gives us to see the right. Let us strive on to finish the work we are in. To bind up the nation's wounds. Gallivanting off. I'll be out in just a minute. Can you tell me if there's a Dr. Zebulon Barnes still practicing in Columbia? Down the street. You'll see the shingle. Thank you. Yank, for a petty toll, you could do us both the turn. Thank you, soldier. Nobody wants you around here. There's room for both of us, son. What are you doing, Blue Belly? Crowding the boy? Excuse me. No, there ain't no excuse for the likes of you. Well, I think it's only fitting if you want the mud with the rest of the dirty belly swine. I paid the man his toll. Well, there ain't enough toll to pay for what the likes of you have done. Both sides did things. Yankee scum burned down Columbia. Rebels burned down Shamersburg. That's a mighty peculiar carpet bag you're carrying. That's no carpet bag. Bother me again, I'll rip you from belly to brisket. Oh, I remember your face and your deeds right enough, Captain. But I can't call your name. Dorn. Matthew Dorn. They called your boys the bloody bayonets, didn't they? First into Columbia, weren't you? That's right. Blew up the railroad, burned down the printing office. And the arsenal. Yeah. And half the rest of the town. It was... Yeah, I know. It was... It was war. It's impossible to control all those men. I reckon so. This was the end of the line. Most of them were just waiting to get back at the state that led the secession. What are you doing with these? You're not a doctor. I was, for one day. The day I graduated from medical school, I got two things. These from my father, and a telegram from the War Department. We regret to inform you your father, Colonel Martin Dorn, was killed at Fredericksburg. Oh, I'm... I know. You're sorry. He was wounded. Not too bad, but he froze to death. 
Lack of medical attention. Oh, should have made you want to enlist in the medical corps. Somebody killed my father. I guess I went a little mad. So I enlisted at West Point instead. Ninety-five days later, I was Lieutenant Matthew Dorn, attached to William Tecumseh Sherman's Army of the Tennessee. So you put aside the scalpel, grabbed up a sword, and ended up cutting a swath of death through Georgia into South Carolina. What'd you come back for? Well, all that time I'd forgotten about doctoring and medicine until Columbia. And since then, I haven't been able to get somebody off my mind. Off your mind or your conscience? A stoop, saintly man who tended as many Yankees as rebels. A fool who I remember never stopped to sleep or eat, only to read his Bible, especially to the men who were dying. This Bible, Dr. Zebulon Barnes. Uh, what are you going to do with these? I don't know. Give them to you, I guess. They're not like me, Doc. There's never been any blood on them. Just mud. Uh, take it easy, boy. The mud will wash off. Them and you. Doctor, when I was in Columbia, I headquartered at a plantation belonging to a Major Whitney Collins. The Major was away fighting in Virginia. This, uh, this pendant belonged to his wife. After we left, I found it on one of my men. She was... She went through an awful lot. She was a lady. I thought the least I could do was bring it back. Can you tell me if she's still at White Oaks? Yes, she is. My wife's death certificate says pneumonia. She died because she was deprived of a way of life. I gave this to Sylvia the day I joined General Johnson. My son's fourth birthday. Boy, will you stop playing with that button? Do what your power says, Toddy. One of the lesser tragedies of war, Mr. Dawn. He's become closer to the hired help than to his maimed father. We'd better be getting back to town, Doctor. We'll accompany you, if you don't mind. I have some business with a tenant of mine there. In order to complete your quaint little pilgrimage, it's fitting that I introduce you to Alexander Howell. <laughs> Lost half his face trying. So now, Mr. Dorn, you've seen some of the residue of your brilliant battle. The New South. Confused child. The lady who died after only half a life. Howell with half a face. Me with half a body. Whitney, I've told you a single operation could make you whole again. But you want that slug in your hip. You'd rather stay damned up inside a monastery wall of self-pity. Half the town follows your stupid example. You should have been a preacher, Zebulon. You're happier saving souls than bodies. Thank you. Mr. Dorn, I understand my foreman attempted to halt your march through Columbia earlier this morning. Yeah, he had about as much luck as we did the first time Matthew came through. Well, the first time might have been different if Howell had gotten in with his cargo. What cargo is that, Mr. Collins? The war's over, Whitney. Unalterably. A cargo of the latest repeating rifles, half a million rounds of ammunition, and dynamite enough to blow you all to blazes, Mr. Dorn. Yes, the Yankees cut our supply lines between Graham Station and Columbia, captured the munitions. My brigade took Graham Station. Well, then, Howell got into Columbia just ahead of you. Barely escaped. 
Be careful, Doctor. Well, I'm sorry. I forgot. You see, Mr. Dawn, ever since the burning of Columbia, I've had an aversion to fire. My face didn't always look like this. Al doesn't talk like a southerner. Uh, he's not. He's a patriot by choice. During the war, he smuggled in arms for the Confederacy from England and France. Oh, what'd he buy him with? Not Confederate money. Uh, President Davis put a lot of gold at his disposal, and gold to spend, you know, Yankee or Confederate. <laughs> and since then? Since then what? Oh, well, since then, he's leasing the warehouse from Collins, speculating, buying up cotton, waiting for the price to go up. Anyhow, we can save ourselves a toll. Yeah, and a mud bath. Go ahead, Doc. Sniper hammers clicking back in my sleep. What's the matter, Doc? It's like I blotted up half a bushel of buckshot and hold it still. Hold it still. Well, I can't. It hurts you, dude. I know it will for a day or two. Is that so, Doctor? Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Who do you think it was trying to pepper us out there? Not us, Doc. Me. Doc! Doc, he swallowed something. He's choking. Put him down here, Justin. He's dying. We've tried everything. He's dying. Take you out of me. All right, everybody, clear out of here. What are you going to do, Dorn? I'm going to cut his throat. you, Major, I'd find him another toy. I was sure it was that button. Where did he pick up a bullet? Children have a faculty for finding the most extraordinary objects. Will he be all right? He's had real smart care. Will he be able to talk and everything? He has someone to talk to. Dawn, I'm sorry for everything I said. Sure. You'll do the hall, boy. You're nothing but a doctor. Why? Because of that? Uh, now that I've done it, I don't think I could do it again. It's like being haunted. Well, that'll pass. You're only haunted by an echo by an army of echoes. That hand was strong and steady. It's the hand of a butcher. Oh, Matthew, how jealous I am of you. We've just discovered ether. It's a whole new era. The next 50 years in medicine will be like looking through a telescope and seeing things now dark and undreamed. I won't make it, but you, you are blessed with youth and strength. Use it, you idiot. It's, it's not that easy. What's easy? Was war, was destroying and killing? Neither is curing. You thought you owed your father a debt. Well, it's paid. Now you owe yourself something. Nobody asked you for a sermon. No. 
Then what are you hanging around here for, wasting my good time? Us doctors don't have time to waste. There are too few of us left in the South. How many doctors you think are left in the wake of Sherman's destruction? And you go on feeling sorry for yourself, like half the South. That's why I took you out there and showed you that boy, Howell. Whitney Collins, a voluntary cripple, so he won't have to do anything. You're like him. That pendant was just an excuse. I'll tell you why you really came back. For me to convince you to be a doctor. Where are you going? North. Good. Matthew. There's a time to tear down and a time to build up. A time to kill and a time to heal. Goodbye, Doctor. Justin, what are you doing here? Following you. How come? Well, Doc told me somebody took a shot at you, and after what you've done for little Toddy, I didn't want to see anybody else try to. <laughs> Would you mind not pointing that Yankee hog leg? I've looked down enough of them barrels. What are you doing? Just a hunch. Want to help? Go ahead and make me happier than a saltwater clam in high tide. Good. What do you suppose that Justin got to? Oh, that's all right, Whitney. I'll bring you a rig from the warehouse and help you take the boy home. No. I'll go along with you, get some fresh air. All right. Look here, Justin. Now, you look here, Yank. Put your gun up here. Careful. Had yourself a full day, Yank. Coming back like a visiting monarch, making a mud sucker out of me, poking your beak into a nest where it don't belong. But, Blue Belly, I'm gonna snow cold kill you. Like you tried to earlier tonight with your crowd killer? No. Because it was too dark and you were too fur. Now you're a mite closer. <laughs> It'd be too much to ask you for an explanation. I think it goes like this. This whole warehouse is an arsenal. One big bomb. 
filled with the munitions supposedly captured at Graham Station. I was afraid that British bullet would lead you back here. What are you talking about? When we took Graham Station, all we found were the bodies of a lot of brave men who died so you could get these munitions to Columbia. Poor idiot souls, the South was fighting a lost battle. So you turned traitor. I didn't turn anything. It's always better business to make a double profit. We're going to sell them all over again, is that it? There's always a market for arms, Mr. Dorm. This is a warring world. And your kind gorge themselves on it. That's correct. While ignorant armies clash by night. You hyena! I subscribe to only one cause, sir. Me. I only wish you'd burn to hell in that Yankee fire. Yankee fire? I needed a smoke screen in order to hide the munitions for a while. No. It wasn't the loosened prisoners, nor the slaves, nor the drunken troops, nor even the fevered patriots who set fire to Columbia. It was I. In so doing... Ironic, isn't it? You scum! standing around and pull this slug out of my side. While you're at it, pull them both out. But you better hurry, because I think I'm going to faint. I got the best of the bargain. For just a saddle and a roan, I got back a son. Threw away a pair of crutches. Matthew, I'll flat out and say it once more. You're wanted. Stay. That wake of destruction you were talking about, I've got to go back over it. Only heading the other way. With this. They'll hate the sight of you, Matthew. It won't be easy. What's easy? Not killing, not curing. I got a feeling you make good use of what's in that bag. And maybe you'll have need for what's in here, too. It's helped me along, Matthew. Time to kill and a time to heal, huh, Doc?
this has been a mar